Hi, everyone. Welcome to our fourth Lunch and Learn. So we have a minute to go. So we'll, uh, grab your sandwiches, grab your coffee, grab a cookie, because that's what Helen and I would do, or we would grab a piece of candy from our candy bag. Um, and we'll be with you momentarily. Hi again. So it's now 12.30 and we are beyond excited at today's program. So kind of came at this a little circuitous way. So some of you out there may um, be familiar with a couple of the Acorn products. We have um, been promoting for the last couple of months Semaline that was first introduced to us by Pam Buddha of Heartspun Quilts and also some of the other Acorn products that are the precision piecing that Helen found out about, right? And then um, probably, again, maybe three months ago or so, you know, my timing is always weirdly placed nowadays, but we promoted a book called Sewing Machine Reference Tool that several of you have purchased already. Well, our guest today, one of our guests, mm -hmm. is the author of this book and another book. So we have, this is Bernie Tobich. Okay, so an excellent guide, and um, his partner, uh, Shelly, is with us today, too. So they are coming to us all the way from Saskatchewan. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Saskatchewan today. Is it not crazy that we can do this? So I'm going to stop talking. We're going to throw it over to Bernie and Shelly, and they're going to share so much information with you. So have your good listening ears on. Oh, Joan, before we go, don't forget, there's 10% off today, anything featured on the lunch page. Okay, you know I always forget that kind of stuff, right? Because <laughs> I get so into the product. So anything you purchase today off of your um, interactive page is discounted 10%. You're going to type in the code LUNCH, okay? All right, I'm taking it over. Bye. If you have any questions along the way, just write them in. Okay, Bernie. Good, good morning. Um, interactive page is discounted ten percent. You're oh, going to type I guess that's in good the afternoon code there. lunch. Yes, I'm not sure. We have a bit of a lag here, so I'm, I'm not sure if this is the right moment to step in, but I guess if we'll you step have any in. Along the way, uh, just write them in. I'm Bernie. And I'm Shelley. And we're so happy to be doing this for you guys. Um, okay. I just want to mention that uh, Shelley's book, Easy Precision Piecing is kind of what we're going to be talking about some of the hints and tips that are in here because this book will show you all about the uh, products that we're talking about today and Shelly gives lots of great great tips on how to achieve a little bit more accuracy in your piecing absolutely yes so what does accuracy actually mean well accuracy does not mean perfection to me perfection is found in sunsets and diamonds whereas accuracy is something that can be measured and repeated with success over and over and over again mm -hmm. and this is what i will be showing you how to do today and sometimes people confuse our um, not confuse but correlate what what we're doing our products and stuff with small pieces and i just want to make sure that that, that you don't think that uh, shelly does work as you can tell in small pieces. I love little, I love tiny pieces. They they just uh, make me happy. Those fabrics are so cute. The smaller you cut them, uh, the cuter they get, in my opinion. But she also works with large pieces. <laughs> and our products are geared to all sizes of pieces. As a matter of fact, you could say that the larger the pieces that you're working with, the more your fabric is likely to shift. And shifting fabric actually is a big reason for inaccuracy. So I think maybe um, what we'll do is I, I just want to mention a couple little things. Uh, Shelly's the quilting genius here. I just work on sewing machines. That's what I do. You're the sewing machine genius. Well, 
I just worked on sewing machines. So what I want to say is any product that we talk about comes at you from two different perspectives. One is the perspective of the quilter mm -hmm. and the other is the perspective of the sewing machine technician. And so any of our products that we talk about here are completely safe for your sewing machine and they're completely safe for your fabrics and for you. That's really important for you to know. So um, we're a little limited on time, so we don't, we're not going to give you our usual really, really in-depth uh, spiel on this today. Um, but I think what we'll do first is we'll talk to you about our easy press fabric treatment. Okay. Easy press fabric treatment is something, Shelly's going to go over to the pressing cam and now while she's doing that I'll just talk a little bit about the fabric treatment. It is a non-scented, fabric safe, human safe, biodegradable, water soluble, I don't know how many more adjectives I can put on there, um, product that is really, really great for um, adding strength to the fibers of your fabric, making your fabric more accurate to cut. It adds an element of stain resistance to your fabric. And when you want to get rid of it, you just, you can rinse it and it's just completely gone. Uh, I think I mentioned that our, our product is sand free. So I, I am going to, I'm sorry, what was that? It will not attract bugs. Oh yes. And it doesn't attract any bugs because there's, there's no carbohydrates in it. So I'm going to switch you over to the pressing cam and, um, Shelly might ask a couple questions. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Um, this product works for, because there's a delay, I'm, I'm kind of adding a couple extra things here. This product works whether you're washing your fabrics or whether you don't wash your fabrics. Because I know there's a debate about that. Some people love to wash your fabrics, some people don't. And I'll let Shelly take over and she can tell you just how she handles it. Okay, you can see by this wrinkly piece of fabric uh, before you that I actually do, I am of the school that I wash and dry all of my fabrics before I ever put them into a quilt. And if you wash your fabrics also, you know that they come out of the dryer like this. So I'm going to show you how to take your fabric from this to this. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is when you purchase these products, you can purchase them in a combi let, pack. Let me switch over to the other camera and I'll just quickly show the products mm -hmm. and we can, we can go from there. Okay. So they come in a combination pack with 16 ounces of the fabric treatment and a mister bottle to provide a nice even mist on your fabric so it's not too splotchy. And then our, our biggest seller right now is our gallon refills. It's called Easy Press Fabric Treat. All right, I'm gonna switch back to Shelly. Okay, so as you saw, Bernie showed you that the 16 ounces bottle came with a mister bottle and that's what I'm going to be working with. So what I'm gonna do here is hold the bottle about 12 inches away from the fabric if, and that is so that I can get sort of a medium amount of product on the fabric. I want to make sure that I can press all the wrinkles out. So all I do is spray and you can see that I have a very nice mist on there. Hopefully you can see, you can see as it settles into the fabric. I want to make sure that I wait about 10 to 15 seconds before I press with the iron. And I prefer to spray one side and then flip it over and press on the other side. You don't have to do this, but uh, that is the way I'm going to. Now I talked about a medium spray. This is, I'm preparing this fabric as though I were going to be working with it for piecing. But let's say I wanted to use the fabric for uh, going through one of those cutters. I can put more product on it and create a fabric that actually can pretty much stand up on its own. Yeah, that's, that is solid enough that it'll work in one of the computerized cutting machines. Like the Cricut? The Cricut. The other thing I can do is apply more product and I can actually use my fabric in the, an embroidery machine without especially a light, a light embroidery design like this one. 
I can pop it into my embroidery hoop and do embroidery on the fabric without having to stabilize. And if I was doing a denser design, I could use a lighter weight stabilizer than what I would normally have to do. Another uh, area where this is really good is a lot of you probably have those great sewing machines that have the nice nine millimeter wide decorative stitches. And those are great because they look so much nicer than the narrower decorative stitches, but often you'll find they will tunnel your fabric unless you put a bunch of stabilizer in there. So this is another way to make your fabric, give your fabric more body so that those stitches don't tunnel. One thing I'd also like to mention is when I start pressing fabric that is damp with easy press, what I do is I'll set the iron at a corner and begin to move from side to side. I'm gently lifting the iron as I'm moving from side to side so as to not stretch my fabric out of shape. As soon as it's dry, that's nearly dry, then I will swirl my iron around a bit and that will take out any hills and, and any hills and valleys that are left in the fabric. The other thing I want to mention is that our product will never turn your iron, your ironing area brown. I've had this particular fabric on, on my pressing table for about two years, and it will not turn the bottom of the iron brown. No. I do work with a dry iron on cotton setting. I prefer a dry iron to steam. And one thing I like is that there's no holes in that iron that will uh, crinkle up my patchwork as I'm pressing. Now, I do want to um, just throw a little caveat in there. If you set your iron to the incineration setting, you will brown your iron and you will probably scorch your fabric in your ironing board and that type of thing. So there's a sweet spot in your iron, uh, usually somewhere around the cotton setting. And what I will say is that two irons that are exactly the same brand and model, uh, can, I'm going to switch cameras while I'm doing this. Two irons that are exactly the same brand and model can have a different temperature at the same setting because the thermostats aren't that accurate. So no matter what you're using these days, you may want to just find that spot in your iron that's the sweet spot for whatever product you're using. But if you use this at a at the right setting, it will never brown, it will never burn onto your iron, it won't scorch anything. So that is uh, the easy press fabric treatment. Um, now, because we're switching over from our Zoom to a Facebook, I'll just stop for a second to see if there's any questions that, that anybody had during that segment. I do want to show you another thing about it, but uh, you know, feel free to ask questions as we go along here. Hi, so, Bernie. We, we had yeah. a couple of questions that I answered. Oh. One was, okay. do we carry it? Yes, it's on your interactive page, guys, so we'll be glad. Yeah. In fact, um, there has been, we've been waiting for some seam aligned glue to come in you know, with the shipping and the shipping and the shipping disasters across everybody. And I have to mm -hmm. say, Bernie and Shelly, as soon as, because guys, these are the inventors of this product. I want you to, it's not just <laughs> them telling you about it. They actually designed it. Uh, but they reached out to the manufacturer for us who immediately called us and is calling us on Monday morning to make sure we have enough that we can order and get whatever we need based on what you guys purchased this weekend. So um, I did want to say that. The other question they got um, Bernie was, does it work with a steady Betty? And I use it with my steady Betty. Does, does it work fine with you, Shelly? Yes, uh, I'll show, I do have one. And the, the short answer there is yes. And Shelly does <laughs> use for some things, you know, when we're traveling, she does use a steady Betty. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is the one that I have. Love this. Uh -huh. It's a uh, wool on one side foam on the other with a plastic insert inside. Yeah. Uh, I use it all the time. Now I will say that because I basically grew up is, is the term I like to use, uh, piecing with cotton on top of my table, my fingers like the feel of cotton on cotton. <laughs> and so what I do is I just take a piece of fabric and lay it on top of the wool. Mm -hmm. And, and that makes my fingers happy. But you can see here that, and I've had this for quite some time. Yeah. It, it uh, works great. There's no problem. Yep. Uh, that's age. Yeah. That's Absolutely. just age. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And the other thing I wanted to let you know is since we first met, I got in my fabric treatment mister because I've been using the smaller one with a pencil, which I just love on my half square triangles. And um, so I got in the mister and I immediately ordered the gallon. And I have to tell you, I'm already on my gallon. So you guys have converted me. Okay. <laughs> and yes, do I use be best press or regular starch for other things? Absolutely. But just ba basic pressing, you've now made me a convert. So okay. Well, that's good to know. Do we have uh, another question? Uh -huh. Shelly... Shelly breaks into a sweat when she's down to two gallons. <laughs> okay, so we have two. But, you know, I sh I'll show you why. Joan okay, has two no, more questions. There's two questions. Okay, fire away. Okay, so when stitching, does it gum up the needle? And um, does the product, this is interesting, does the product produce a stiffer finish than best I, I, press? I'm not hearing Okay, so um, one, does it, does it um, gum, up the needle. gum up the needle? When they're stitching? No. 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 Okay. The other one is how does the stiffness of this of, of fabric press treatment compare to the stiffness of best press? Uh, it's hard to... We, we, I can tell. I can you, feel you that. Could, for sure. Okay. So really depending with best press and with easy press, it depends on how much product you're spraying onto your fabric is, is one thing that's important to know. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I found is that, uh, and I, I was using Best Press before Brudy created the Easy Press. And the thing that I found, it, the biggest difference between the, the two products in the feel or the hand of the fabric, uh, with Easy Press, it doesn't feel slippery. It, it leaves the fabric feeling like fabric, which I really love that. Uh, in terms of the body, it will depend on how much product you yeah, put into this, your fabric. This is really stiff because I, Shelly wanted it that way. Yeah, I couldn't get my fabric like this with this stiffness with the other product, but I can with Easy Press. Okay, great. Any other questions, John? Or is that it? Okay, we'll, be, we'll go give it back to you guys. Okay. So I'll show you why I break into a sweat when uh, I get down to two gallons. I'm, oh, I do scrap quilts. And this is what's waiting for me. I cut everything from a fat quarter down to a uh, fat eight. And this is what's waiting for me to press. And I, I do a lot of scrap quilts and the more fabrics, the merrier. So I'm going to show you uh, using this. To, so Shelly is showing you this on fabric that's already washed. So it's pre shrunk but you may be from that school that says, I don't want to wash my fabrics, and that's okay. Here's three pieces I've of- got you covered. This, this is unwashed fabric, three pieces of it. And we've been carrying this around for two years. Uh, we've done nothing to it. We haven't retreated it. We've just left it. So the long piece that you see here, I'm gonna hold this up to my shirt so you can see also the fraying. So you see the amount of fraying on that. Uh, it's just off the bolt, nothing done. The second piece, is, can you see that? It's about, and let me make it so you can see that. It's about an inch and a quarter shorter because using the product and the iron actually shrank it, we pre-shrank it. And less frame. You can see that the fray, the frays are much shorter. On the third piece, it shrank maybe another quarter of an inch or so. Here, let me get that up close so you can see. So about another quarter of an inch or so. And in terms of fraying, there's almost zero fraying. That's after two years, okay? So one of the reasons I, I show this is because most of you will already know this. I'm not telling you anything new, but uh, different lines of fabric will shrink at different rates. So if you are using different lines in a quilt top, what can happen afterwards if you haven't pre-washed the fabric is that then you go and you wash that quilt. And different areas of that will shrink differently than other areas and it can create sort of an uneven uh, crinkliness if that's a word even is that a word that works for me okay. I like it. if that's even a word crinkliness is, can be a nice, nice feature on a quilt but it's nice if it's sort of all over even crinkliness <laughs> okay she's laughing at me what can I say I'm not a quilter I'm a sewing I'm a lowly sewing machine repairer. It's texture. Te texture, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we like texture in our quilt sometimes. Got it. We can call it texture. Okay, the next thing we want to show you is our seam-aligned product. 
I'll try to pre-answer some questions here. Semaline is a glue that's different from other glues. And, and the reason it's different is because Shelly has used glue for decades rather than pins because she gets better accuracy. She doesn't have to stop to pull that pin out just as it gets to the presser foot. But uh, a lot of the glues she used held too tightly. And so if she made a mistake pulling the fabric apart, often the fabric was damaged. Um, also, they left too hard a dot of glue in the fabric so that when you went to quilt this, if the needle hit that particular dot, there was an effect from it. The needle wanted to stick in that dot. Some of them were kind of gooey. Some of them were really hard. So after a particular disaster one day, she called me and said, we need to come up with our own glue. So none of the stuff we were showing you here was meant to sell. It was all for Shelley's uh, quilting needs. So it took us about three years, but we came up with this uh, glue that does not have any polyvinyl acetate in it. And that's a staple in most glues. And why that is good is that it, our glue is truly biodegradable. Uh, it's non-toxic. It doesn't leave that hard dot in your fabric and you can pull it apart if you need to, if you've made a mistake. Going back to the polyvinyl acetate, when you go to, uh, you can legally say that the, the glues that have polyvinyl acetate, they can legally say that they are biodegradable, no problem. But what that will biodegrade into is a drop of oil, okay? And our glue doesn't do that. We, we felt that down the road, when this did biodegrade, we didn't want um, a drop of oil in the glue. Okay? So we'll be happy to answer questions as they come up, but I'm going to switch you over to the glue cam here, and Shelly will show you what she's doing. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate on one-inch wide strips because they are very dramatic, and they are going to really show how well... Uh, these products work for your piecing and your pressing. So what I'm going to do uh, is apply little dots of glue in the seam allowance. And I place the dots about a half an inch apart. I know we're talking accuracy here, but you do not have to measure those. You can just eyeball those. I remember the first quilting class I ever took and my teacher was showing me how to do applique, and she said, eyeball the seam allowance, and I thought I was going to break into your Shelly's sweat. head nearly exploded. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so now, once I put the dots of glue on the fabric, then I'm going to place them right sides together. Now, what I want to show you here, I need to show you this. When you're placing the glue on, they come out of the little applicator as tiny little controlled dots. I'm not sure if you can yep, see you that. Can see that. Yeah. Yep. And they're about the size of a steel pinhead. So what I'm going to do next, I have applied the dots of glue there. And what I want to do is look and make sure that my edges are lined up exactly. And then I'm going to press with the iron. And by pressing with the iron, it dries the glue. It takes about five to 10 seconds, depending on the heat of your iron, to dry that glue. Now let's say I'm doing a whole bunch of strips, a bunch of little strips for a scrap quilt. What I do is I'll, I'll prepare all of my strips that need to be prepared. And then I take a little clip and I place it along the edge of the side that I glued. And that helps me remember that's the side I glued, that's the side I'm going to stitch. So what happens if you make a mistake? So what happens when you make a mistake let me show you that. Let's. I'll just pull this one off up here. And what I can do is just take the two fabrics and pull them apart. And there's nothing left behind. And my fabric didn't fray. It didn't stretch out of shape. And now what I can do, if I once I've made that mistake and I want to correct it, I can apply little dots of glue once again in the seam allowance and then place my fabrics right sides together and press once again. And just so you know, the quilts aren't stiff. Uh, they don't have hard spots in them, e even though we've used the fabric treatment and we've used the glue. They're, they're still very, very pliable and, and uh, soft. And 
once once they're rinsed, if if that's what you wanted to do. Shelly hasn't washed any of hers, but if she did, all everything would just be washed out. All right, I am going to uh, first. I'll see if there's any questions, but I'm going to switch you over to the the sewing machine camera, and we'll just. Uh, so the reason uh, I'll just let you know why haven't I washed my quilts? Uh, most of my quilts are for hanging in our booths and for shows, and so I have not washed them. When I get started sewing, you can see I have the two pieces of fabrics here, and what I do is I sew on top of the fabric, and I. I stitch until I get to the very end of the fabric. This is good morning, Gracie. This is the first stitch she's made today. When I stop sewing, I stop with the needle just off the edge of that fabric. And now I'm ready to start my piecing. I call that piece, that those two pieces of fabric, the header. I raise the presser foot and place the strips right up to the needle and line up the edge of that fabric exactly along the edge of my foot. By doing it that way, Shelly knows that her seam allowance from the very first stitch is exactly what she wants. If she had started to feed the fabric in under the foot at the very beginning of the foot, that might not necessarily be the case. And where your where, um, seam allowances are the least accurate is at the very beginning and the very end of the seam. So you can see, I just raise the presser foot and snug that fabric right up to the needle. So the first stitch, like Bernie said, is right on the fabric. I stitch, this is about how fast I sew. If I sew any faster, I feel a little out of control. So now the stitching at the very top is the same width as through the middle. And in order for me to get the stitches the same, the, the seam allowance the same width at the end, I, as I get to, to the end of the fabric, I place my index finger on the fabric and against the foot and I keep feeding. I slow down even more and make sure that fabric is fed right along the edge of the presser foot. I want to just point one thing out here. Where I'm looking as lining up, where the needle is here, I line the fabric up here. I'm not worried about it so much here. I'm worried about it here. Once I get to the end of the seam, I raise the presser foot, lower, place those fabrics once again underneath the presser foot, and I sew until I'm just off the edge of the fabric. That I call the footer because it came in at the, at the end. And once I clip my threads, now when I turn this fabric, this becomes the header. Bernie, why do I use headers? I'm going to explain that. Thank you for that nice segue. You're welcome. So one of the reasons, there's a number of reasons that uh, Shelley's method is good. One is that if you were just to start sewing at the beginning of your fabric, the first three stitches aren't as secure as the rest of them. That's because that thread isn't anchored at the beginning. But here, those stitches are already secured because she's just one stitch off a piece of fabric it's just like a continuous seam on fabric. There's another very, very good reason to do this. I'm going to hold up a, I'm hoping this shows up. <clears throat> Can you see on your, on your screen? I guess I, I don't know why I'm asking because I don't know what your response is. Can you see the, the this foot is starting to have wear marks on the underside? Absolutely. Can you see that? Absolutely. It looks like my okay. foot. <laughs> okay, so yes. here's what happens. Here's a sewing machine tip. When you start to get these wear marks, and this one is not bad at all, you can just kind of see the discoloration here and here and along here. But some of you are going to find, if you look at the underside of your quarter inch foot, that you already have grooves worn in that quarter inch foot. I'm going to just switch cameras here so uh, it's easier for me. All right, so you may have grooves already worn in the underside of your presser foot. And how that manifests itself in your piecing is that your stitch length is going to start to vary. Also, it may not it may not want to keep the fabric right at the edge of the foot. 
Another thing where you may see the, uh, the a manifestation of this is if you're trying to climb over even little seams, and Shelly's gonna show you some little seams in a bit here, but your stitch length may vary, your foot may not wanna feed over that seam properly. So having this damage on the underside of your foot doesn't lend itself to, to accuracy. Another issue there is, I'll backtrack a little bit, the metal feed dogs, or the metal in your feed dogs on your sewing machine are much harder metal than the metal in your foot and in the coating that's on your foot. So as you wear these grooves in, your fabric just doesn't want to feed properly anymore. And this side being rough, here's what happens. You have two pieces of fabric that start out the same length. The feed dogs are feeding the bottom fabric, but the top fabric is being held back by that roughness on the underside of the presser foot. And as you sew, your top layer ends up trying to get longer than your bottom layer. Now, using the seam align blue, of course, minimizes that because it's, those fabrics are going to stay together. But it's always a good idea to check the underside of that presser foot. And I'm willing to wager, I'm not sure how many people are watching this, but if we have a class of 20 people, I'm going to find minimally five people that should be changing out to a new quarter inch presser foot. So when you get an opportunity, just go to your machine and have a look and see what you find. You may be really surprised. And you'll be surprised at the difference it'll make if you have that damage and then replace your foot. Uh, any questions about that? No, we're just getting some great here. we're getting some great feedback, Bernie, saying great tip. Really enjoyed it. You've got over 72 viewers right now with you. So um, oh. You're doing terrific, so thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, let's talk about something else if you're thinking about accuracy, <clears throat> since we're talking feet. One of the biggest things we find that can detract from accuracy, and this might go to about 50% of the people in our classes, if you have a presser foot that has a guide on it, what happens is that guide often rests on a feed dog, and as you're stitching, the guide moves away from the edge of the foot. But we kind of trust that guide, so we push our fabric up against it. Now, there's a gap between the foot and the guide as the fabric pushes against it and as the feed dogs move that from side to side. So what will happen is you can get varying seam allowances, and mostly what happens is you get more than the seam allowance that you're looking for, and things start to measure out smaller than you think. That's particularly troublesome if it's a variable, because... If in, in one piece, if the pieces are not, if one piece is the right size and one isn't, then what happens is your corners don't meet anymore, your points don't meet anymore, and you may think, oh, it's something I've done wrong, when it really isn't anything you've done wrong. It can be something as simple as the presser foot that you're working on. It may be damaged, or maybe that guide isn't, doing, isn't really helping you. And we're not saying don't use it. We're just saying if it's an issue, don't use it. Okay. Question for you from Mo, and I'm not quite sure which tip, so I'm going to ask on both. Um, so, Bernie, your tips on the presser foot and the bottom of that, is that in your book on either the smaller book or the larger book? That's just in Bernie, and we are so glad you that's shared a, it. That's, a, that's actually another talk we do about your sewing machine and other things that detract from accuracy. Oh, but gosh. I just thought I'd I thought I'd chuck it in there. <laughs> That's wonderful. And we're probably going to see, we might, I hope this isn't the last time we see Bernie and Shelly. Yes. And then okay. the other question, they may have been asking it of you, Shelly, because I know you have your book, Easy Precision Piecing. Um, yeah. Is that I, tip about your headers and leaders in your book? Yes, it is. Okay. Everything that I'm showing to you today is in the book. Okay. The products are all in the book at step-by-step. -step how to use these products. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. Because I know my takeoff and landings aren't any better in sewing as they are in flying. So <laughs> there's yeah. also six and, really nice patterns for quilts in here. Oh, and they okay. did a great job photographing yeah. the step-by-steps. It's really super clear. Okay. I uh, created a, at the very beginning where it's okay. Including block builders with pressing direction. Oh my gosh! Which we don't have. We don't have time to talk about today. But those are fantastic. I can't live without. I can't quit without them. Uh, but I do have a, a place at the very beginning where I lead you through step by step by step how to create units that are simple units like four patches, nine patches, and doing the pinwheels. 
half square triangles. It's all laid out in there. And then it leads you to the quilts and how to do the quilts. Wonderful. And, and Shelly, you're being very modest. That quilt behind you, you shared with us yesterday is from AQS. So um, that Shelly yes, created. Yes. So she's, uh, guys, she's a, a world-renowned quilter. So we're really blessed to have you here with us. And sorry we interrupted your, your pressing, but you were very, both of you are very modest. This is, um, this pattern is available still from AQS. It's in the July edition, uh, July 2020 edition, which is still available. And the pattern's in there. Cool. And Terrific. It, sorry it, I interrupted, guys. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Just so you can see the cover. This is what the cover of it looks like. If you go to AQ, you can order it there. And I'm going to brag for Shelly. She has another one in there in September of 2021. Cool. That one's called Here Comes the Sun. And it's a rainbow of colors. And it was the quilt that I made as I was dealing with this whole uh, a pandemic that we've all been living through together. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder, All right. Wait to see we're it. going to we're going to switch cameras and we're going to take the next step here. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. So I'm going to now show you how I press my little one inch strips. And the first thing I always do as soon as my pieces come out of the sewing machine is I want to set those seams. And what I'm going to do is just set the iron on top of the strip, just like it came out of the machine. And what this does is this helps to settle the thread into the fabric. The next thing I'm going to do is finger press. And when I'm finger pressing, the, the pads on the tips of my fingers are what I'm using. They're very sensitive and they can feel that the fabric is being rolled over on top of, over the seam allowance. And I can feel that everything is nice and snug to the thread. I'm not pulling or pushing really. I'm just gently laying that thread over as though, or the fabric over as though the thread is like a hinge. You'd be surprised how, how you don't have to work real hard to get accuracy. Yeah, I do. Yep. Shelly's uh, Shelley's not beating this fabric into submission. What she's doing is she's gently bending it to her will. How's that? I am, and then I, I like to say fabric or, or fabric cannot be mastered, but you can master the techniques. Fabric has a mind of its own, you ask me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that this little piece is not laying flat. And what I found is for my, my cutting when I go to sub cut is I find that that will detract from accuracy. So what I figured is that if I could take my easy press, my easy press fabric treatment and put it into a pen and apply it directly to the seam where I want it to go, that would be fabulous. So that's what we created. The easy press is in the pen. You can fill the pen, you take the cap off, fill the pen, put the cap on, and then you give the nib a push and that will, but you're gonna do, mine's already primed, but you give the nib a push a few times and that will prime it and you're ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I, I want to show you something very quickly and that is on highlighting. I find that people find it a little challenging while you're doing that, Cheryl, I'll say that these nibs can also be replaced. They're, oops, they're very inexpensive, but if you should wear one out, um, easy just to pop it out and put another one in. So I want to show you the exact movement that I do. When I'm highlighting my text with a highlighter, I will just move the pen right along the text nice and smooth what i'm not going to do is this because by doing this if i'm going like this on the fabric that stretches the fibers and uh it doesn't work as well you it's also wear out your, your yeah. nib yeah but you, you're just applying a very very light amount of product to the high side of that seam yeah so i'm going to now just 
apply the product to the high side of the sink and turn this off. I'll put me just that. <laughs> and now I'm going to press. So again, I get the pads of my fingers up against that seam. And again, I'm just using a very gentle punch. And by heating the fabric with the iron, this will dry the product. And look at that. We have a beautiful flat seam. When I subcut this, I have accuracy. So this is why we're calling this press as you go. So this fabric initially was treated. And then as Shelly stitched things together, she used the pressing pen on this. And this is how it comes out. You don't have to press your block afterwards or press your uh, your top afterwards. It just comes out like this. And you can probably see how nice and accurate everything is. And even you can see here in the longer pieces how it, how it made these edges really nice and straight. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is sub cutting and sewing pieces together. Before I go on to that though, I want to show you, I know that there's some people, do you have that? Yes, I do. There's some people that do like to press their seams open. I don't, but just like washing and drying fabric, we're, we all do things differently. So I want to show you how easy it is if I want to press my seam open, I can just slide my, this is an Apple Quick tool, and just slide that in there. And then I'll show you how to make this nice and flat. I can go in here with my iron, and I'm just, I'm feeling along and making sure I'm pressing the fabric up against the seam. And now this, these seams aren't laying flat, but if you take your pressing pen, apply a fine, a fine film of fabric treatment on there and press, then you get nice flat seams and great accuracy. I'm just going to move my cutting board over here. What are we doing there? Any uh, any questions on this? As Shelley is just setting up her cutting. She is, one question is: Do you ever use steam? No. No, no steam. I never, I never use steam. Often, often we find in our classes that when people are using steam, instead of having a straight line, uh -huh. they'll get a little smile. They get a nice little smile. <laughs> Which turns right? into a frown, right? I'm being positive. <laughs> I find that that steam and I don't get along uh, from there from when I very first started piecing uh, quilting, especially. Oh, the disasters. But now I just avoid steam. Steam okay. tends to stretch fabric out of shape. Okay. Um, okay. And um, can this product be used in preparing applique? And I would think so, but I think it would be oh, wonderful for yeah. applique. We're, we're going to show you a little bit uh, when Shelly's done with this next yeah. segment, but we definitely use the product for applique, both products. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, I'm going to switch you back to, the, now it's the cutting cam. <laughs> so it's really important once we have these lovely strips that are we with our nice straight seams now we want to be able to cut accurately so i'm going to show you a little trick that i like to use with my cutting and that is i like to use these little itty bitty eights rulers of course you can use whatever you have but i first of all want to cut this in and make it nice and tidy and so i do what i call the Two ruler method because I'm going to work with two rulers. I know, it's right? Absolutely right. So I'm going to use one ruler here and line it up right exactly along the seams. I'm going to take the other ruler and butt it up to the to this first ruler and move this ruler aside. I don't take it on, I leave it on. And this way it keeps the strip from shifting on me. 
The next thing I do, I find that when I'm cutting, sometimes right at this very tip, the fabric can stretch and snap back away from underneath the ruler and give me an inaccurate cut. So to avoid that, I just cut right there first, and then I come back down here and cut. And then I have a nice fresh cut from one end to the other. I'm just leaving this ruler here so that it's not to measure, it's just to keep the fabric in position. When you're working with smaller pieces, sometimes things do like to shift. And now I'm going to take this ruler, line it along the edge. Where's, my, where's your line there? Right the line, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah. Anyway, yes, this line is what Bernie's asking about. Whenever I'm cutting, I try to make sure that this line is exactly on top of the fabric. Fully on the fabric. It's fully on the fabric. There's not anything go extending left of the line. And it's I don't have a gap between the line and the edge of the fabric. I have the line resting on top of the fabric. I'll tell you why I do that. I'm going to make the cut first, cut here first and from the bottom up. I do that because when you're pressing your seams, there's that little bit of fabric there. And that is, that seam allowance needs to be accounted for somewhere. And so I account for it with just the, the width of the line. And that's called the turn of the cloth. So we want to account for the turn of the cloth in our cutting. And that way, if you're finding your blocks are always turning out too small, that could be one of the reasons. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to put some patchwork together. Because it's all well and good to, we can sew strips. We've done that before. Oh, I want to mention, when I'm sewing these little strips together, one inch wide strips, if I'm sewing a long strip together, let's say you want to make a 40 inch long strip because you're sub cutting a whole bunch of little one inch uh, sub cuts. What I'll do is I'll cut that 40 inch fabric in half widthwise and then work with just 20 inches. And this will help you to avoid that brown we were talking about. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply a little drop of glue here. Oh, look at that. While I was waiting, I didn't put the cap on, but don't worry. All I have to do is take a pin and take that out and we're back in business. There's just a little bit of glue that gets dried in the tip. And what I'm gonna do is just apply little dots of glue in the low side of the seam and the high side of the seam and in the corners. That's all we need. And then we're going to line our patchwork up. Now what I'm doing is again with the pads of my fingertips, I'm feeling and I want to make sure that my seams are not only lined up here, but also a quarter inch down. Very important because that's where your seam is going to go across. Once I have everything lined up as I want, and I'm just feeling in there. You, you do end up getting a feel for that so that you know when your pieces are lined up. I just press to set the glue and we're ready to go. All right, back to the machine camera. You're a great producer. I know, Oscars are coming up. Yes, they are. <clears throat> okay, again, I'm going to raise my presser foot snug that patchwork right up to the needle. This is the reason I do this. I raise the foot, get the fabric right up to the needle when I'm doing my strips, because when it's a great habit to get into, because when you're doing your patchwork, you want these edges all lined up. You want these seams all lined up all along the edges. So that's how to get those seams lined up along the edges. And now I'm just going to stitch, making sure I'm going right along the edge of the foot. 
When I'm sewing, I don't look at the needle. I look at the edge of the foot. That's where my eyes are. The needle's gonna take care of itself. This is where you wanna be looking. I'm at the end, so I take my index finger, place it along the presser foot, make sure everything's lined up. Because we're demonstrating, I'm just doing one piece here. So if I'm done with my, my sewing, I'm just gonna put a little footer in there. All right, and before you, uh, you go ahead and do that. And then before you actually show the pressing on this, I am just going to show them something else. Okay, take it away. Okay, so what didn't happen here is in those areas where Shelly had her nested seams, as the presser foot went over top of it, normally it will try to separate those. Because of the seam align glue right in that corner, that didn't happen. And that's where the accuracy comes from. Terrific. Um, Bernie and um, Shelly, it's 120. So I'm wondering okay. if you could share with them how you trim those half square triangles and your tips with the tapes. Absolutely. You bet. So just we'll just quickly press that piece oh, real fast. And I then can, let I me, let me switch you over press. and then we'll just switch right over to half square triangles. Okay. So when I'm gonna press now, I have, uh, I have set the seam, I've applied the easy press, and I'm pressing. Oops. And you can see now that, oh, I got some tape on there, that was the problem, that my seams are nicely lined up, and everything's nice. How are those I don't know, what do you think? No, that's pretty good. Time. I trust my glue. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right. Should I get the tape off there? Okay. Should we get your cutting mat over there again? Yep. Here we go. Let's move we'll on. we'll do this really quick. This is just amazing, guys. I was just enthralled when you showed us this. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I I do a lot of half square triangles. They happen to be my very favorite unit. And when I first started quilting, I felt so smart that I could do them. Okay, so what I do, I'm going to take my two pieces of fabric and I'm going to place them right sides together. And then I'm going to take my magic wand. I love this magic wand. And I'm going to place it onto the fabric from corner to corner. Now, when I bought my magic wand, it, it tended to slide a little bit on my fabric. So what I did is I bought this C and T, this maker tape that is absolutely fabulous and has a little bit of grip on one side and it's sticky on the other. And I trimmed it down to the width I needed for my, my ruler, just a little bit narrower than the ruler and stuck it on. And what that does is that keeps my ruler from sliding. Made it so much easier for me. I like, I like things that make things easy. And now what I'm going to do is just draw a line from corner to corner. Now I'm making this line darker than I normally do because I want you to be able to see it. Oh, that actually didn't turn out too bad. You don't want the, the pencil line to be too dark when you're working with a light fabric or to show through on the opposite side. So the next thing I'm going to do is slide this over for a moment and show you when you're doing bigger half square triangles, we're working, on, we're stitching across the bias here. And so what can happen is that can shift and crinkle up in there and uh, just cause a whole lot of problems. So what I do to avoid that is I'll take my glue and again, place little dots of glue right there along the bias and then place my fabric right sides together. I'm going to press. And that is going to set the glue. Now, with the magic of television, uh, I, or do I have you time to sew? Need, you okay. Sew okay, I have one ready. Here we go. So I would sew on both sides. Now, 
Now let's say that I, now I want to trim this. And just like with my, my uh, little quilter's wand, sometimes when you're trying to trim your, your half square triangles, they'll slide. So what, what you would have done is sewn on each oh, line. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? Yes. And then cut diagonally from point to point. That's right. Okay, which gives you. Oh, I have one here. Which gives you this. Yeah, maybe yeah so okay so i would as bernie just said i would stitch on the line from from edge to edge and then i trim on the diagonal and i have two halves for trying this now i'll press those when you're pressing again you want to set the seam always set those seams and now I'm going to, I, I like to place the seam that I'm pressing towards, towards me. And that way, again, I can just use that as a hinge. And then I'm going to press. You want to pay particular attention to these little corners. Don't forget about those because sometimes you can press a crease in there and cause an inaccuracy when you're trying to trim because there's too much fabric there. Once I have that press, I apply the easy press. And again, I press. Okay. Now, I want to cut this. So I like to work with this Itty Bitty 8 6 by 6 inch ruler. And that tape I talked to you about earlier, this uh, maker tape, I apply a piece of maker tape to the wrong side of my ruler, and I make sure it's right along that 45 degree angle. And what that creates for me is a nice ridge that I can butt up against my seam. One thing I found though, as I was cutting these, is that once it's butt up there, everything's just want to slip and slide. So here's how to keep that from happening. I think you're gonna love this. Yes, I know I do. This is called uh, double-sided tape, and uh, it's quarter inch. And what I'm going to do is just tear off a little piece of that, that quarter inch tape, and then I'm going to use, uh, the, in, in the States, it's called squat tape. Oh, I see. And it comes in a variety of widths. It's great, you're gonna find so many uses, but this is what I use it for. I press the seam or one of the uses. I'm going to place this, cor this corner of the fabric on top of the tape where the seam is pressed away from. There it goes. I then put my ruler and check this out. I can snug that ruler right up to the seam, like I showed you with the, the turning those little subcuts on the nine patches. I push my rotary cutter right up here at the top to get a nice fresh cut and trim. Oops, oh, I'm so sorry. I hit that, hit that camera. And now I'm gonna lift that off, turn it the opposite way, turn my ruler. I'm trimming this to two inches. So like I showed you with the other piece, I make sure that line is pulled on top of that square, which I'm cutting a two inch password triangle out of there. And you can see it's easy to get everything lined up. I push here and roll. I'm gonna have a funny angle to avoid the uh, camera. So I'm going a couple times. And there you go. You got these beautiful, sharp, to the point. So this ridge created by the tape snugs perfectly up to this fabric and it creates a, a barrier and it makes a perfect diagonal. And why I like this, I know there's other rulers on the market that you can use, but what I found that there's a, sometimes the dip is too, too deep in that ruler and this fabric can shift in there. Up, up so, here at the corner. The yeah, it, it moves when you're cutting. And so with this, I have, pressure placed right up at the corner, right where you need it. And I can get a really accurate trim. 
It's great. And as we were talking, uh, Shelly, you could also use that tape trick, which creates that little ledge that you're using. We could do that with our tucker trimmers or any of the rulers that someone is more comfortable with, in addition to the Absolutely. idiot bitty eights, right? Yep. Yeah, and All here's another cameras. use that I, I, I use them for is uh, sometimes when I'm cutting, when I'm doing the, uh, we call it, oh goodness, there goes a word, uh, peaky and spike. Uh -huh. When I'm cutting those shapes I, and you cut your strips a certain width, I place the, the tape right on the ruler where I want to, what the width that I need to cut, and I can just butt that right up on my strip and easily cut. I, so I don't have to go, oh, what was that again? Where, where am I measuring from? Okay. So great tools. And it also helps to keep these from slipping and sliding when you're cutting. Wonderful. Well, I know you can't see it right now, but people have been sending lots of hearts and thumbs up on our oh, side. So they've really been enjoying you. today. Um, and we got a comment that said, I just made 112 half square triangles. Wish I'd waited, right? And, um, and so with that is just so great. And, and Joan and I were talking off camera going, oh my gosh, we have to see if we can get you guys back for some, some other classes. You've just done a tremendous a lot. I've learned a lot. I know Joan learned a lot, guys. And I'm seeing lots of hearts, guys. Let's give the thumbs up to the folks from Saskatoon, to Bernie and Shelley oh, for just sending us a wonderful, wonderful day. And I have to say, you guys, we stumbled into your booth, virtual booth at Quilt Market, to talk about glue. And look where that went from there to <laughs> everything else. And you, your knowledge and your support of independent quilt shop dealers has just been tremendous. So you're seeing, you. I mean, the hearts and thumbs ups are still flowing from Buffalo, New York. So Thank you. great, we appreciate that. Any last questions? I'm getting the program was terrific, excellent show. What is the name of the tape? So there are two different tapes, right? There's the maker's tape. Yeah, so uh, this is the maker tape. Okay. And They're perfect maker tape. Uh, this is great product. And then the uh, other one is called, well, they, it's known by Soup Wang, right. but this is SCORE, S-C-O-R slash tape. Right, it's SCORE tape, great. and that's the one that holds your fabric, and then the maker yeah. tapes holds your rulers. And so, right. yeah, just tremendous, tremendous. Um, thank you for this. It was a great program. Thanks for Super Show. Learned a lot and products are so practical. Thank you. We're getting thumbs up and thumbs down. What end? So I want to just say thank you so much. And Bernie and Shelly, is it okay if I get in touch with you guys to follow up? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. talk we'd, about we'd, we'd love to know. and stuff. Yeah. yeah we'd, love, we'd love to know. Yeah. Same here. So, guys, everybody on lunch, on lunch and learn. Thank you so much. Turn in tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern for Saturday Smile. We'll have a replay up. So, if your friends didn't miss it, miss today, guys, and you want to share this program, please send out that share. Um, and we want to say thank you again to Bernie and Shelly. It has been our pleasure. So, goodbye, thank guys, from Buffalo, New York. Paper. All Thank right. you. We'll sign off on our end here. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>